Good morning, everyone, and happy Wikitree Day to you. Hello, my name is Greg Clark, and I'm a Wikitree member and an app developer. And um, we just finished Hacktoberfest. So um, I thought, what better time to show off some of the apps that we have available. And for this session, it's just going to be me. You're stuck with me. Well, and my dog Finnegan is over there in the corner. There's Finnegan. Finnegan, say hi. Oh no, he's he's lazy. He's sleepy. So you won't get any any contributions from Finnegan. Sorry, um, but you will have me. And um, so, um, <laughs> uh, what? I, sorry, I'm just getting this. Oh, it's a little bouncy there. Um, me and my uh, my Tardis of coffee to keep me awake and. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, it's going to be a uh, a big day. Lots of great stuff on Wikitree. I hope you um, watch the uh, the welcome and the introduction to the Wikitree team that just finished. And if you have, if you're watching this after the fact, you should go back and and watch that. That was a great uh, introduction or presentation um, to some of the people who you don't often see because some of them are be always work behind the scenes. Um, but anyways, the focus for this one, this session, will be on um, on my app specifically. And uh, so there are two things that I wanted to profile, and which were in the title, on the Super Big Family Tree, which is the app I worked on during Hacktoberfest, as well as the DNA Confirmation app. And we will go get into those. But I thought before we did that, uh, I would do a quick update on some of the apps that have that were worked on last year and have been added to the Tree Apps section of the tree because. Um, some of them have been introduced, uh, some were introduced last year, some were introduced throughout this year. And uh, I thought it'd be a nice follow up to last year's Wikitree presentation. So, uh, Wikitree Day presentation. So, we're going to start with that. And uh, hello to everyone in the chat. <laughs> Someone's already seen my TARDIS one. That's great. Um, I will try and keep, um, keep a handle on uh, questions in the chat as they come along. But um, as I'm alone, uh, I may miss some, so I apologize for that. But if you do have a question, uh, put a cue, maybe you have a couple cues actually to grab my, um, because now I use multiple monitors just to, to show you, uh, talk a bit about behind the scenes. Um, I actually have, uh, along with this laptop that I'm staring at you in, um, I actually have a monitor on this side and on this side. Um, so when I turn my head, it's because I'm looking at one monitor and if I turn my head this way, I'm looking at the other monitor. Um, and so I don't always see the screen where the comments are. So um that's just my apology up front for not seeing your question right away um, but let me go ahead and share my screen so you we can get started with this grand tour so hello to everyone who's saying hi to me in the chat by the way thanks that's great to great to see you so um to get to any of the tree apps and all the ones that uh, almost all of the ones that we're going to be talking about today are tree apps you go to your uh, your profile or one of your ancestors' profile or anyone's profile who you want to investigate. And when you get down to the meat of the profile itself, where it gives the uh, biographical information, your name and whatnot, uh, along the top here are tabs. Now, if you're like me, sometimes you you totally have ignored those tabs and uh, don't see them for eons. But one of those tabs actually says Tree Apps. And if you click on Tree Apps, it will open it up and it will start loading um, by default, the one that it usually loads with is the couple's dynamic tree, which looks like this. And then, which is a really nice one. I This is not one of mine, but it was um, it was created during uh, Hacktoberfest last year. Um, and you basically click on a plus sign and it expands the tree that way or going in the other direction and stuff. So, um, but we want to start with the fan chart. So we're going to click on the fan chart here. And so there is the default look at the look of the fan chart. Um, when you first look at it, the first thing you'll notice that's different from last year is that all of a sudden there are marriage dates in the middle of it. So yes, that was a new feature that was added, I think, in uh, July of this year. Uh, so you can actually customize those, it's just like lots of other things you can customize. There's a settings button. The settings button was there last year. What was not there were all these buddies next to it. So one of those buddies is a question mark. And that leads you to a whole free space page on the Fanchart app. And that was created by Murray Maloney. Um, and he has done lots and lots of work keeping this up to date. Uh, it took, <laughs> um, he put a lot of work into it, just getting it to, you know, to document the features. He started this in, I believe this was in July. Um, 
And then, of course, as he was as he was working on it, I kept adding new features. So he had to keep revising it and revising it. And he will continue to revise it because he's a great guy. Um, but he's organized it very nicely into the different settings options. Um, we actually, in the free space page, we actually picked some nice Canadian examples to use. Um, so there we go. Terry Fox, Gordon Lightfoot, Faye Ray, Jocelyn Barassa. Um, so there's lots of neat stuff there. And if you're confused by what any of the settings do uh, in my fan chart, I would recommend you go there right away. Um, the other neat thing is when you are in the settings area, there is a question mark next that'll take you specifically to that area. So if you wanted to find out details about the names specifically, boom, that takes you right to that spot. So great work, Murray. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, the other thing I've added as an information panel that just basically, and I've added this to all of my tree apps, uh, just to give you, a, you know, sort of a, some basic information about it um, when it was last updated, which is also help, helpful for you um, to know. And uh, if there was additional programmers who helped me out and stuff, and then the, the latest G2G post, which is kind of helpful. Um, and also a link to my main index page of all the apps I've done, the ones that are on tree apps, as well as the standalone ones. Uh, and this button here allows you to zoom in or out. And it actually has three settings. So there's the default setting, which is this, which is sort of like 80% of the screen. No, that, no, that's the 80%. Then there's sort of the full screen. And then there's a custom one. And if you zoom, say you want, this is what your preferred zoom level is, then it'll go back and forth from the two presets to the your preferred one. Now, of course, if you want to change your preferred style to something else, then it'll go like that. So that's a handy thing, especially as you get you know more and more generations to the fan chart. It's hard to see them all at once, but that's a quick way of doing it. Another new thing um, connected with the zoom, actually, is the ability to print on a single page, no matter how big the fan chart. So let me just add a couple generations uh, to this fan chart. Wow, they're loading really fast this morning. That's kind of nice. Um, so I've got seven generations here. Now that's going to take a fair chunk of paper. Um, but I'm going to hit now on my, I'm typing on my keyboard, uh, Control Command P on my Mac or Control P on your PC would do the same thing. Just opens up the default print dialog. And you'll see that it's got the whole fan chart on one piece of paper. Uh, now, the last time I printed, I chose to print in landscape on legal size paper, which is a perfect uh, scenario for a fan chart, if it's in semicircle form especially. Now, if you had customized it and, and choose, chose one of the other default forms, then you might choose a different thing. But if you notice, if you change it to portrait, it's going to stay, stay legal paper because you've chosen that but it's going to automatically fit the fan chart to, to stay on that paper. And the neat thing about that, let me put it back to landscape. Um, if you have the option to open it as a PDF, and many of the operating systems now do have that built in, I think all of them, all Macs have that. And I think most Windows, uh, the newer operating systems have some ability to print to PDF. Um, if you click that and open the PDF, and let me just drag it over here so you can see it. There it is. So that's just a PDF. But when you zoom in, well, okay, you can let's zoom in. Notice as you zoom in, it uh, the text and the lines and everything um, are crisp and they become crisp. So you could send this PDF to a professional printer. So no matter how large it is, and it would print out nicely. So that's a really nice feature. And that was that was the work that Jonathan has helped me with, Jonathan Duke. His name was one of the names in the that dialog box that people would helped out. So thank you, Jonathan, for adding that ability. That's going to really improve. And I'm going to be adding that to all my other apps as I uh, move along and work on those. Um, but we first started talking about the new marriages and ways of customizing that. Let me zoom back out to just five so it's a little easier to see. So under dates, you can see that show the marriage date is now an option. And by default, I've got it turned on, but you could always turn it off if you didn't like it. Um, if you turn it back on, it's there. You can um, have an option for it to blend into the background so it's not quite as in your face. And the other option, and uh, both of these options were actually ones that were recommended by Sandy Paddock. Uh, 
who is sometimes one of my first beta testers because she she loves working with apps. In fact, we've invited her to the Hacktoberfest panel and she's given some great feedback there. Um, so she suggested both of these options, so I made it happen. And so that puts the marriage date up top in line with the photos so that it doesn't interact or doesn't interfere with the birth and death information, um, which is especially important if you have um, if you've chosen, you know, if you happen to have long place names or, um, in your in your fan chart, that can override the overrun those uh, marriage informations. Uh, and again, if you change the, your date format, um, the marriage date will uh, conform to that as well. So there you go. Um, there's also some new coloring and highlighting options that weren't there before. For example, in the family stats. You can uh, color it by age, um, and you can also color by number of spouses. Uh, so let me see. And here is that. So I've got a couple um, ancestors here who were married twice. Um, there is one eventually who I've got. I've got someone who was married three times. But anyways, that's. Uh, you have to trust me on that one. <laughs> uh, and again, of course, you can also. Uh, color by background, by the birth country, and you have actually lots of options there. Birth country, birth uh, country of death, uh, down to the region or the town, and lots of other options you can play with there. I've even odd added options for coloring the, the text in the cells, which gives a um, sort of a two, you've got the background color and the text color, which are all, all unique, which helps you really see the differences. And if there's lots of different colors on the screen, the text coloring might help with that. Um, let me change this back to just generational and go into the highlights. And in the highlights area, um, one of the things, neat things, is you can choose um, a specific day and then highlight all the people who were alive on that specific day. Um, so in 1950, who, who among, who on this fan chart were alive in 1950? Well, I was born in 64, so that's not me. But all but one of my grandparents was alive and but five eighths of my great grandparents were alive at that point, and one great great over there. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so if you want to pick up a, a particular date in history and see which one of my ancestors would have been alive and would have witnessed that or could have heard about that, that would be kind of a neat thing to to say. Um, and you can also do a search for text. So if you wanted to search for, uh, oh, let me think, um, shoe. I have some who are shoemakers. Um, there we go. Donna Cloutier was a cordonnier, uh, yeah, cordonnier, a shoemaker. Um, I'm not sure why his mother is highlighted there, but maybe it's because it referred to her son's occupation at some point. Anyways, there you go. Um, and the other thing, look at this. We have integrated biocheck into the fan chart. So you can actually highlight um, ancestors in the fan chart who have issues that are um, um, the issues based on that. And in fact, you can go to one of the options is in the coloring is you could color it by the biocheck status. And that would tell you now let me turn off the highlighting because that interferes. There we go. And so you can see by the coloring, this is the purpley. So that means there's style issues. So um, and then you, you'd go, want to go into the uh, biocheck. Look at that. There's a, click, a quick link to the biocheck, opens that up, and we can see the style issue is that the acknowledgement subsection is instead, instead of a section. So nice way to use integrate those two together. The last new thing uh, in the fan chart, and I'm spending a little bit longer than I originally was planning to, is that you can add badges to your ancestors. So the way badges work is that they just sh show up on your fan chart um, uh, based on the criteria. And actually, the criteria are based on any categories that have been added to these profiles. So for instance, I created a prof uh, category, a personal category, for all of my ancestors who were alive in 1931 and lived in Canada who I should be able to find on the 1931 census. So if I click on that, then all those people who have little ones, that badge number one, uh, will be that um, are 
have that category on their profile. Uh, if I wanted to add a second badge, I could say anyone who came from Bond Township. And over here, John Pringle was from there. Um, and so on. So you can add lots of different things. Uh, one of the options is uh, you can also use stickers. Uh, you can also, and there's also some DNA confirming. You could uh, D DNA confirmed. Um, so I've got some of that. And uh, anyways, you can explore those too. So if you don't want to use the, if the highlighting doesn't do it for, or if you want to do, you know, some multi-purpose things, so you highlight uh, things in one one form uh, to highlight one aspect of your ancestors, and then throw badges on to highlight another one. You can have lots of information, kind of on information overload possibly, but Anyways, there's lots of possibilities there. So that's what's new with the fan chart. Um, so uh, let's move on from the fan chart to some of the other apps. And let me just grab this. Uh, no, not that. I want to grab. No, I don't want to grab that. What do I want to grab? I want to go here. No, there. Yes. OK, so the next uh, tree or next tree app that was introduced this year was the X chromosome um, or the X family tree app. And so again, you get that from the tree app. So if I was on uh, the fan chart, I could ju just go down to X family tree, hit go, and it would load it up. And so there, there it is. And what the X family tree does, basically it takes your X family, it, it takes your, it follows the path of your X chromosome. And I should have showed that to you when I was on the fan chart. Um, uh, let me see. Let me find X chromosome. So there, there's an example there of what the the path is. So your X chromosome, uh, you inherit your X, you inherit one X chromosome from your mother, and if you're a woman, you also inherit an X chromosome from your father. But men only inherit an X chromosome from their mother because they get a Y chromosome from their father. So if you look at the app here, where are we here? There we go. Um, let's reduce it to four generations so it's a little, a little easier to see. So you see, if we start at the bottom here, uh, I've inherited one X chromosome. I only have one X chromosome. Uh, my mother has two, and she gave, she gave me a combination of that. Uh, she, in turn, inherited an, an X chromosome from her father and then a combination of her mother's two X chromosomes. So she inherited from both parents. Now, my grandfather inherited one from his mother, and my grandmother inherited one from each of her parents. And so it follows down. And this ver the default version for the X family tree is it shows you the amount of X chromosome in terms of probability. So you see that if where a mother donated an X chromosome to their child, the by default it shows you half and half so half of the of her top one half of her bottom one or basically half of what she got from her mother half of what she got from her father and i don't know if you can tell on youtube if the resolution is clear enough but there's sort of dark blue and light 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 blue light blue and dark blue uh brighter green and lighter green um anyways when they get get to these different colors it's a little easier to see and as you go down so you can see that um, I inherited, or uh, potentially, according to probability, I inherited a piece of my X chromosome from, you know, at four generations, from three possible ancestors. And you can see the different colors, the bluish, the bluish, the yellow, and the green in mine there. Um, but they're different amounts because the inheritance is uneven. The amount you inherited potentially from each uh, ancestor is also uneven. But there is one other aspect about X chromosome inheritance, and that is that it is random, just like all DNA. And so I've built in a random simulator. So the first graph that you, or the first chart that you see the default gives you what the probability is, assuming that at every stage, a mother gives half and half of what she has to her children. But because inheritance is random, there are different, um, your chromosomes, when they recombine um, in meiosis, uh, it's it's all it is all very random. So you don't know what's going to happen. And so the randomizer just randomly picks zero, one, two, three, or four um, points of recombination. At which point 
it gives you different ones. So look at the right, let's zoom in here. What's happening from Marie Eugenie Alphonsine to her son, Joseph Eli. Uh, so she's got a dark blue from uh, her mother and a light blue from her father. And there are four con uh, recombination points here. So at four points, does it switch from the, the light blue to the dark blue, back to the light blue to the dark blue? To the so that's a really mixed up chromosome that he um, got. Whereas Marie Bert from her mother only has, she's got one half is a light green and the other half is a bit darker green. Um, but then when she passes that on, she, you see you get some green, some yellow, some green, and then you get down to here. And because of the way um, the random works, sometimes you get to just a single copy. So in this case, in this random simulation, I only received one part of one chromosome from Pauline. I didn't get anything from these other two ancestors. But that's just a that's just a random sample. That's not actually fact. If I hit randomize again, we'll get some other combination. So it's kind of a cool little simulator. Um, uh, an idea I have is that you know eventually, um, what I'd like to be able to do with this app is to uh, add the ability for you to actually plug in uh, values or points so that you know that sort of this you know, so you could sort of map which segment comes from which um, ancestor once you figure that out. And um, but Anyways, that's down the road a bit, but in, that would be a dream eventually when we when we get enough tech that we can figure that out ourselves and then map it. I think that'd be a cool feature to add. Um, let's move on to uh, the last one is the Ancestor Webs. And that one was added last year, um, but I've added some new features to it this year. And uh, one of the, among those features is I've cleaned it up a bit and so, uh, giving you more options in terms of what you can display. So um, when you're at one of these full trees, uh, I've just, by default, I just choose the initials because then you see more people in one screenshot. You can't really tell who they are unless you really know your, your family tree really well. Um, but if you want to put first names, uh, it'll make it wider, but it'll make it easier for you to pinpoint where people are. And of course, you could even go full names if you want, but then that's going to make it super, super wide, but super clear. Now, again, when I have, I haven't got the, the printing to PDF working in this app yet, but when I do, then this view would probably be the one that you would use most often. Uh, I'm going to put it back to um, uh, the initials, just because I like that view a little bit more for this view. Um, and it did have the ability to show where there were repeats. Now at five generations, there is no repeats for Joseph Echel. So I'm gonna go up. There's some repeats at generation six and generation seven. Let me look at this. Um, so that means there's some ancestors that repeat over. So there's a cluster and another cluster that repeats itself. So those two AD and MJD obviously come from the same parents. And if I click on repeat, you can see just that specific uh those specific lines where they repeat now what's new this year is the ability to add to compare a different person so i'm going to add another one of my ancestors and her family tree is going to be loaded uh and i had it preloaded and it loaded really quickly um uh come on marie augustine Trudel, where are you okay um when it's loaded uh then you'll be able to compare where those the uh, they have ancestors in common and i'm wondering what's happening Okay, looks like they're, let me just refresh this. Okay, and let me add Marie Augustine right from the get-go. See how that works. There we go, there's Marie Augustine. Uh, so she has no repeat ancestor that at, at five, five generations or at six. She has three repeats at generation seven. 
and Joseph has six repeats at generation seven. Now let's see if they have any in common. So if I'm going to click on the common button right here, and at seven generations, they don't have any common ancestors. But let's up the ante there. Let's go to eight. It's loading. Nothing at eight. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. So we have two common ancestors at nine. Let's go to 10 to make it a little more interesting. And there we go. So here, at 10 generations out, Joseph and Marie Augustine share 10 or eight different ancestors in common. And if we go to singles, then this view takes one of those common ancestors and shows you the path of how both of these uh, both of these people, who just happen to be my ancestor as well, um, one is my great-great-grandfather, one was one of my great-great-grandmothers, um, how they are related to each other. And you can scroll through that list and see. Now, so that sometimes you get really interesting ones like this. So, so Michel Rimé, Joseph is related to in two different ways. Marie Augustine is only related in one different way, but so there's three interesting paths there. And if I were to increase this to 11 generations, uh, is this the one? Yes. Here's a very, oh, wait a second. Nope, that's not who I wanted. Uh, I want Boucher Inconnu. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Let me just zoom in a bit so you can see. So Joseph, if you follow his path up, he's related in two different ways, and you have to sort of follow. So one goes through there, through Jeanne. One goes up through from Michel to Etienne, through Marie over to Marin. And Marie Augustine is related two ways as well, through uh, Marguerite to Marie, uh, which I think goes back to Marin and also from Marie Seminaire up to Marie. So this is, uh, I think this is one of the, uh, one of the ancestors that I have that um, three of my four grandparents are related to, <laughs> descended from. So that is, um, that's old Quebec for you, uh, Nouvelle France. Uh, so there we go. So that's, that's one of the things that's new in uh, the ancestor webs. And what, right now, if you click on the plus person, um, it only allows you to compare two people to each other. Ideally, over this next year, I would like to add the ability to add a third person so you can pair up to three people at once and see what common ancestors they might have. So that's something I've got planned for the future. Okay, so that's a quick wrap. Well, it's not so quick a wrap up of what's new with apps that were pre-existing. Now, let's take a look at the two that were on the main, that were on the title that you were expecting to hear about. And I'm just gonna take a quick sip of my TARDIS if that's okay. Mm. So Murray, Murray's made a comment there. I'm not sure whether you meant Gasp or Gaspé, but probably Gaspé. <laughs> um, uh, let me, oh, actually maybe while I'm here, let me look, see if there's any cues, any questions, uh, some nice comments. There we go. Uh, good morning, everyone who's saying good morning. Uh, <laughs> great job. Biscuits. Oh, someone had to say biscuits. Uh, I have no Appalachian roots, though Sandy did make me an honorary Appalachian for my help with the fan chart. But uh, uh, I'd love to have some Appalachian roots in here somewhere. Uh, can this be printed out? Print to PDF. Yes. Um, for the fan chart. This one, not yet. Um, colors look great. That's good. Uh, and it would be great for considering DNA match lines. Yes, it, when you have these common ones, especially if you have endogamy, um, this might be a, a good helper to see how this, how you're related to multiple people so that, uh, and try to sort that out. Uh, so, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. moving on to the new, what's new? Okay, so let's start with... <laughs> Let's start with the super big family tree. So first I have to kind of admit, um, this one, uh, this is my Hacktoberfest fail for this year. And, and I, in a sense, I, I am, uh, I wonder if it's better just to go back to this screen. Um, I might share, share the other screen 
for this one, just because the way it's formatted. Um, uh, so this was the, the I'm going to stop sharing this screen and start sharing a different one, OK? Um, there. So the uh, super big family tree, this is the app I've been working on for Hacktoberfest. Um, but I never got it into the stage where it was good enough to actually publish and add to the tree app. So it's not going to, when Jamie pushes the button and makes all of the Hacktoberfest apps live, all this, the work that was done, this one won't show up yet um, because there are just too many things that aren't quite right yet. Um, there was, as, as we go through it, you'll see there's, there's a fair bit of complexity to it. And some of that complexity was eluding me. I made a, a huge breakthrough just a few days ago. So now I'm pretty confident that I actually have all my people. Um, before I had some and not others. Um, but let me show you what the, the goal of it is. So the idea of this app was that um, you could use it. Uh, you could use this app to print out uh, a full pedigree if, that, if that's what you wanted to do. So here is an example of that. So starting at Joseph Eli and Marie Josephine, um, they're their children, and then going up to their parents, their parents' parents, and so on. And this one, by default, I have it color coded by generation. So you can see, uh, let's see there. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that exactly, but anyway, so you could use this app to just print out a pedigree chart if that's what you wanted to do. You could also use it to print out a descendancy chart. And um, in both of those areas, I have seven generations being the, the default. So you can go down uh, uh, two generations, three, four, five, six, seven. OK, seven generations down. And <laughs> because I chose someone fairly far back in time, so there's the seventh generation in the purple there. Um, this, uh, this goes on for quite a while. If, you, if I zoom out just so you can see the whole family in one shot, there you, or maybe you can't even see the whole family in one shot. You see how tiny, itty bitty tiny that is? Yeah, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? But that's the whole family in one shot. Now, what I have done is I have, oh no, I don't, I haven't implemented that actually. Um, I I have implemented the the zoom feature in this one, uh, and if I do that, let me just show you. Let me zoom in there, and now if I could do Command P, there is the whole family in one shot. Yikes! That's and that's a that's a descendancy table. Now if I go do what I did before, and I go to print, open the PDF. And where's the PDF showing up on my screen? I'm looking for the PDF. There it is. OK. Uh, that doesn't look very helpful, does it? But let's zoom in. And uh, if we don't lose where we are, uh, oh, it looks like I've reached the end of the zooming level in this program, but I would say I, you can, see, well, you should be able to read. Well, I can't read what this is, but the PDF is written in such a way that it should be able to print even at this extra large size. But anyways, that's a little bit more legible than it was on the screen. Uh, so anyways, uh, that, so those were the two, stop. let me, um, what's happening here? Okay. My cursor is going crazy. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I'm going to close the previewer. Um, so basically, uh, let's go to the third view here. Here we are. The concept for the, the app 
in general is that you choose as many ancestors as you want, as many descendants as you want. So you could go pure ancestors and just do a pedigree like this one was. Or you could choose pure descendants and just do a descendancy chart like this one. Or what I thought would be more common is you do a combination of them. And what I've always wanted in a family tree is not to see just the um, just the pure, just the an the direct ancestors, but I want to see the aunts and uncles in them because for me, the whole the family tree story is about you know the family they grew up in. So uh, my grandfather is more than just my grandfather; it's my grandfather and the family he grew up in. Like that, that's part of his history and his story. So um, and it's. Uh, very difficult to find charts that have that. Uh, used to never, there used to be none. There are some now, but I thought I'd design own because there isn't one that's on Wikitree yet, but there will be shortly once I figure this out. Um, so if you add cousins, so the ancestors, descendants, and then cousins fill in all that gap. The first level of cousins is first, of course, adding the aunts and uncles, which are basically the siblings of your direct ancestors. So here you can see I've got so the bottom line here is actually my joseph eli is in fact my grandfather so joseph Ashil is my great grandfather here um and then his parents and uh so his siblings are, are there and um uh there we go and also his parents and their siblings show up and those are his aunts and uncles and if I go one more generation up, it will load another generation of great great grandparents along with their aunts and uncles, their their siblings, which are more aunts and uncles for me. But in, as well as just aunts and uncles, if I want first cousins, then it's going to expand it and add the first cousins in that. And the way to make this actually um, legible is what I what I decided is that every generation the cut the aunts aunts and uncles and cousins would sort of be in line with the um the direct ancestors who are siblings of that of that person so you can see so for example here we have louis marcou we have his sibling so catherine monfati was his second wife um and there's a little bit of a spacing issue here so that's one of the things i still have to work out but christine was one of his uh, uh sisters as well as was zoe cleofe and marie and i have the level of first cousins so those would be the aunt and uncle level and then their children are would be at the first cousin level if i add second cousins then we get another level and you can go up to my plan is to go up to third cousins no, it shouldn't say loading fourth cousins. It should say loading third cousins. Um, I put a little message here because at this point, we're, we're loading lots of people <laughs> and you need to be a little bit patient. So I thought by updating you on the various stages as it's going back and forth to the database, it will make you a little bit less impatient. And uh, sense of look at this, 511 spouses and in-laws being loaded so we're almost there 401 out of five out of 511 five there we go and we're done so now we have all the third cousins and if we zoom out so at this level we have lots of third cousins uh at this one this level here we don't have as many third cousins and that could just be because um those families the those families just haven't been filled out in, in wiki tree or it could be that they're too close to the current age but if xenon was born in 1910 he'll have he'll have children who will have lived and pro and already passed away as well probably by now so it's probably just a matter of their families haven't been filled out fleshed out enough okay um so that's basically the idea of the thing now the other option here is the in-laws and that is something that i've added as well and again, this is part what now that all the people are showing up for the longest time, uh, cousins weren't appearing at all. Then they were appearing, but they were only <laughs> but they were coming from single parent families. They only had they didn't have their spouses never showed up. And then something else was happening. And um, anyways, I finally figured out how to get all the people 
but now some of them are overlapping. And so that looks a little messy. So I have to fix that before um, this is ready for the big time. Uh, but in, in a little less crowded area of the screen, let me see where I can show you. It looks like everywhere the in-laws are showing up their, their uh, here we go. Let's just look at this. <laughs> so basically, uh, the person in orange who's covered up um, is a direct relative, but there, and uh, she married Georges Ignace, and those are his parents right there, and so on. Because when you think of an extended family tree, um, people who will marry into the family, I mean, they're part of the family, but you always, you usually at least know the in-laws who have come to the wedding and stuff. And uh, ideally, one of the things I was hoping would be to add the the siblings of the of the in-laws, but we'll get to that. Will be a for a future time, and uh, where they would where we could put them so it doesn't look even more cluttered. Uh, I'd have to consult with a few people and see what they think. Uh, but anyway, so that's where the super big family tree lives right now. And what I can do is I can actually give you. I'm going to post this link. This is to my personal testing server. Um, so you folks here who came to join me, thank you very much for doing that. Um, uh, you now can test my, see my progress as I continue on uh, with the programming and as it gets better. Um, but I should warn you that it will get, it, ideally it'll get better, but there'll be times when all of a sudden it'll stop working completely or it'll get worse. Um, and that's just the programming cycle. And um, so caveat emptor, if you want to use that link, go ahead. You're welcome to do so and watch my progress. Um, during Hacktoberfest, I had lots of people who signed up and who wanted to help test this, and I still need people to test it because I, I need people to go through and verify that all the people who should be showing up at certain levels actually are. So that um, if you signed up for Hacktoberfest to help me with that, great. And if you didn't, but but would like to be on that tester list, then please send me a message uh, so I can add you to that so you can test that out. Um, and then also the spacing. Once I get the spacing working, uh, then it'll be time for some big time. Now, I also have um, uh, uh, someone who helped me with the, it was going to help me with setting up some of the settings. And there's not many settings that work right now, but one of the settings I did add um, was in the general section is to put colored boxes. I'm going to turn off the in-laws here. Uh, colored boxes around the ancestors. And what that does, and I just added this as sort of a debugging tool for myself so that I could see the families who are connected to each other. And um, so you can see all the ones in this light blue color are all the uh, siblings of Joseph Elie. The ones who are in this light pink are all relatives of um louis marcou and so on so each each ancestor and their siblings have a, a single column so um that's uh that's where this is living right now so again um open to additional help as we do this uh let's see if there's any questions about this do, do, do. Yes, it's this this tool will be helpful with uh, highlighting endogamy as well. I can see that. <laughs> I had different thoughts of different sticky notes helping with this one. Kay, you're so right. Um, okay, Chris, hi there. Chris has joined us, our wiki tree in chief. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to now move on to the other app I promised I would talk about, and that is the DNA confirmation app. So it's the DNA confirmation citation maker. And I'm actually doing a few updates to it now. Um, and uh, I should, uh, there's lots of people on the DNA team that have helped out with this. Uh, but one person in particular, John Kingman, has done a lot of work. He does a lot of work daily with DNA uh, citations. And he helps, uh, helps me spot when there are issues. And unfortunately, I'm way behind in fixing some of those issues. And most of them are fairly tiny, but there's a few that um, definitely need looking at. And uh, now that Hacktoberfest is over, I am planning on getting to that uh, very shortly. But let me um, uh, give you a quick tour of this. Um, so the idea of the DNA confirmation citation maker is that uh, when you 
uh, confirm that you are related, when you find that you have a, a cousin and that confirms the genealogy that you've already done, that you are in fact related, uh, then you can add in Wikitree that indicator that you um, that this relationship is confirmed by DNA. So it, you've got it proven uh, by genealogy sources, but the DNA confirms that. So DNA alone can't say, well, this person is your grandfather or your great great grandfather, but it can confirm a relationship that you've already established via the paperwork paper trail. Okay, so um, that's the purpose of uh, DNA con of DNA confirmation. So. Um, I'm going to sh bring up my own profile here. And you can see at the bottom of my profile, I have, I have a few uh, confirmations. My paternal relationship is confirmed by an ancestry test between me and a second cousin. And my maternal relationship is con also confirmed by different tests but with a different second cousin and then it gives you all those details so the it's it's to write a confirmation uh, a source citation for that dna statement um is fairly technical there's lots of aspects about it you have to you have to uh indicate where which company you were tested at um who the other dna tester is how they're related to what your most common really uh, most common ancestor is most recent common ancestor and what your connection and what bo both people's connection is to that um, as well as technical details about the match you know what the company said the match was um, how many centimorgans how many segments that sort of thing so there's a lot of stuff there and so it's not uh, it's not super easy to write one of these and if you're doing a bunch of them it can be very onerous. So that's why I tried to make this process um, a bit more um, a bit more fluid. Uh, so, and the one, uh, so that's what it looks like. Let's go through, um, and we'll start with a simple DNA match because that's gonna be the one that you use most often. So if you have a match, someone on Ancestry of My Heritage, um, any of the big uh, testing companies, and you, uh want to say uh indicate that you're um you found the match and that you want to make a, a, a dna source uh, citation um i'm going to just copy his profile here copy id and put this in here okay so you put in your you put in your uh wiki tree id you put in the Wikitree ID of the other test taker if they're on Wikitree, and you click next, and it will find your. It will create a little wee mini D, uh, tree. And when you do that, um, you well first thing you should verify that this is in fact the right tree, and that, that we haven't gone askew. But no, that's true. That's what it looks. That's the William Douglas, William Brereton, Brereton Douglas, and there's myself. And so he'd be first cousin two times removed. So we'll go on to next. You have to answer these questions. Have you confirmed it by genealogy? Yes, you have. Um, has the match been provided by a company? Yes. Um, and does it correspond? It does, yes. Okay. And so then we fill out which company it was, uh, how many, and it said, uh, let's, no, it was actually first cousin. First cousin, let's say, let's remove. And then the last step is it gives you it gives you the citation. So there's the citation right there. And the instructions at the top are important because this tells you how to actually add that confirmation. So it found that our common ancestor is William Douglas and Mary Bigger. So the way a confirmation works is you go from the, the child confirms that their parents are confirmed by by DNA. So Herbert is my great great grand grandfather who um, was the child of the common ancestor. So I'm going to go to his edit page and there's a link right there and you click on it, it'll open it up automatically. And you go into edit mode and you click on, in this case, it said that I could click on that father. Let me go back here. It says you can say that the father is confirmed and the mother is confirmed with DNA. So that's what I click on. 
click, click. I've already done this, so that's why they're already pre-clicked. And then the next step is to add this source citation under sources. So I can copy this, or I can just hit this copy button and it'll be copied automatically. Go to the profile, go to the bottom of the sources, down, 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 down. Okay, I was very wordy here. And you can see I've already done this once. So I've already pasted a number of citations. So anyways, but if I, uh, let me just, new today, just so you know that I'm not faking it. There we go. And then I can get preview to see what it looks like. And you can see at the very bottom, there's the new, there's the source citation. Okay. And so then I would save that. Where's the save, save button? Do, 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 do. It's at the bottom. I don't have the Wikitree browser extension. Um, installed at the moment because in nine minutes, Murray and I are going to sh show how to install the Wikidew browser extension. So <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm not use using the Wikidew browser extension at the moment. Uh, so there's the citation is the bottom of, of this profile. And the parents are now, William and Marianne are now DNA confirmed. And what is handy, which is very cool, is that there's, there's a bonus. So this citation, um, by default, it gives you the citation for the most common ancestor at the top, okay? So because me and my third cousin, or in this case, it was a first cousin twice removed, um, share DNA, and we know that it's we came from these this set of great-great-grandparents, um, then we know that the the two sons that, they, that we both descend from um, are definitely DNA related to those confirmed from those great-great-grandparents. Um, but we can also follow that trail all the way down to, to, my, to myself personally and to um, my first cousin twice removed, who I used, as, who had the DNA match. And here's the bonus. There's all the other people we can confirm with this. And if you click this checkbox, then you get their confirmation statements too. So we don't have to go through this all again to do the rest of the people in the chain. We can just copy and paste. I think this link will open up William's profile, so we can do that. William Norman Lionel, I actually went by Lionel, but um, his first name was sort of, well, anyways, um, we could add his, and then we could add the next William Dwight. We could add William and Douglas again from the other son, and, and so on. So you can do, with this, you can do a whole raft of DNA citations in one easy step. Um, let me show you just... Um, one more thing. So the other the other types of of um, of uh, citations are very similar. Um, there is one. Let me show you. A, uh, if you put in a uh, an alternate, so say you have a match, someone who's not on WikiTree though. So then what you have to do is you can put in an alias, and you can just use letters, or you could use a first name, whatever you want. And then you can choose, um, you choose what, yeah, it, whether they're male or female. And then you determine where they are, how they're related. So in this case, the common answers that they share are great-grandparents or no, great-grandparents. And it's going to be William and Mary. And it's also his great-grandparents. And in fact, I know that he comes from Richard, who comes from William. And his father's not on Wikitree, uh, and he's a male. So there we go. And we can continue on. And then the rest of it is very similar. But in the source citation, it says FD, which was the alias that I gave for him. Um, but it says how he's related to the rest of the people. Um, so it's still it's a valid it's a valid source citation because it gives you all the information you need to know um, to follow follow the path. And again, you have this bonus section. Now, in this case, because my 
tester is not on is not on Wikitree. I can't go all the way down to him, but you can go up to the ones the pe people that were connected to him. So you could go as far as as Richard Douglas. So um, the rest of them work similar. Uh, I don't have time right now because I have to get ready for the next presentation with with Murray, um, which is on setting up the Wikitree browser extension. So I'm hoping some of you will join me there. Uh, but if you want to explore the DNA confirmation app in more detail, uh, at the bottom of the app, there is a bunch of how-to videos that have been set up that show how to do uh, how to do the simple tra trans simple confirmations, a triangulation example, one with an X DNA, one with Y DNA, and the mitochondrial DNA is, works the exact same as the Y DNA, except that it's for the mother's line and not the father's line. But um, those are other things you can follow. And, uh, and again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at any time. Uh, most of my apps have a link here for contacting the author, which will open up automatically and send me a message on uh, Wikitree. So thank you very much for joining me today. And I hope you have a great Wikitree day. Uh, there's lots of great stuff uh, lined up, uh, lots of stuff in the apps and tech trek, um, start, uh, starting with in a few minutes how to set up the Wikitree browser extension. So have a great day, everyone, and uh, I'll see you shortly. Uh, and I think I'm just trying to find the outs in the video to play us out. Okay, here we are. See ya. Thank you.